Welcome to Lecture 2 of Biology 116 entitled Prokaryotes. As we move forward in Biology 116 or Bio 2, what we're going to be doing is building life essentially, going from the most simple and to the most complex forms of life that we know. Now, initially in our first lecture, we didn't technically even look at life. We looked at viruses, and viruses, as we proved in our previous lecture, they are non-living. Now we're going to move forward with that idea of what consists of life by mentioning the prokaryotes. And that's what we'll introduce in this first flowchart, in a basic introduction. So let's look at a prokaryotic introduction. So, what are prokaryotes? Well, prokaryotes, let's begin right over here, are very important microorganisms for the most part that belong in two major uh, belong in one domain domain prokarya but have two subdomains let's say and those would be um, bacteria which we're going to study a lot and also archaea which aren't we're not going to study as much but still important to mention that they're also involved so we have prokaryotes um, that are divided into two separate domains known as bacteria and archaea Prokaryotes were the first forms of life, and if you remember all the way back from Bio 1, in the origin of life, when did life first arise? This is a number you had to remember. This was about 3.5 billion years ago, BYA for billion years ago. So here we have a basic understanding of what prokaryotes are, what they consist of, and when they first evolved. Now, I mentioned this before, and I'm going to reiterate a couple of different points about that very origin of life that we studied in our previous uh, semester of biology one. In the origin of life we had something known as the chemical evolution hypothesis. So the chem evo hypothesis. This should start ringing a couple of different bells but just to summarize very very quickly the chemical evolution hypothesis quite simply states that initially we started off with some sort of um, ancient heterotrophic uh, organism. Something that was heterotrophic uh, was the first, let's say, living form of life. That heterotroph then eventually evolved through this chemical evolution hypothesis, keyword evolution right now, into something a bit more complex, and that would be something like a photosynthetic uh, autotroph. That's something that can make its own food, utilizing photosynthesis, utilizing the sun's rays as a form of energy and converting that um, that energy into a nice usable chemical energy. So that's a, a big step in our evolution um, in terms of our origin of life. And then finally, we end up with uh, something that's critical, critical for everything that we know today um, are the aerobes. Okay, the aerobes are the ones that are going to be utilizing oxygen, oxygen exclusively for all of their chemical, biochemical, uh, physiological processes, both subcellular, macro, micro, you name it. So this is a basic origin of life that we study. Now, prokaryotes themselves are going to put themselves in this origin of life here and there, and we're going to look specifically at where they show up and how they evolve, let's say, into different forms, and then eventually we get to our eukaryotic cells a little bit later on in Bio 116. So that's our basic chemical evolution hypothesis. Keep in mind these three major steps of life, let's say, of the origin of life. Next, what we need to understand and make sure we're very, very clear of is the fact that prokaryotes are incredibly dominant. They are very, very widespread. They're all over the place. Uh, a typical example that you see in almost every bio class, um, though not maybe 100% accurate based off of recent research, but still important to sort of scope our understanding of prokaryotes and their dominance is the following. The human body has uh, about 70 trillion cells. So we'll say human body with 70 trillion, about 70 trillion, not billion, not million, but 70 trillion cells. Okay, big deal. Where are prokaryotes coming with this? Some estimates have the prokaryotic amount of cells within the human body, within me and you, outnumbering us 10 to 1, in which we have 700 trillion, 700 trillion bacteria that are going to be both in and around our general person, our general body, okay? Both in and around your immediate environment, let's say. So this is something that's incredible to think that there's a 10 to 1 dominance uh, of human, our own cells versus the bacterial counterparts that we have. OK, 
Okay, so it's a very uh, important relationship between us and bacteria. Furthermore, a nice word to describe prokaryotes would be pervasive. It's a great vocab word to describe a very pervasive domain of life. Now, pervasive simply means, and all we're going to need to know about this, is that prokaryotes are literally found everywhere, everywhere, from the most uh, extreme of environments, mostly the archaea in those extreme environments, to the pH of 2 that's within our stomach. There are bacteria within our stomach that can withstand that. It's incredible to think just how pervasive uh, prokaryotes are throughout Earth. They are truly dominant and pervasive. Great two words to describe these, uh, this domain of life. Finally, uh, in terms of size, just to get a nice scope of understanding, we're of course talking about something that's micro. It's a microorganism. It's very difficult to see a prokaryote with your naked eye. And that is because they range anywhere from 0.5 to uh, about 5 micrometers. So that's their basic size. Your textbook probably has a good reference point in terms of this and how it compares to a eukaryotic cell, how it compares to a virus, etc. And uh, whenever you see micrometers, you might also see this as a, a fancy looking U like this with an M. That also means micrometers as well. So there's our basic introduction to prokaryotes. They're dominant, they're pervasive, they're small, they were what the original forms of life, and they are broken down into bacteria and archaea.